We're an all-female group of content creators challenging ourselves to hike in the high Atlas Mountains in Morocco and learn more about the local Berber culture. The Atlas Mountains extend 2,500 kilometers across the northwestern African countries of Morocco, Algeria and Tunisia, separating the Atlantic Ocean and the Mediterranean Sea from the Sahara Desert. We start our day in Wilgan Valley in the foothills of the High Atlas Mountains. We're traveling with Intrepid Travel, a group adventure travel company, and our entire group are BIPOC. We're being led by our local guides, Mohammed and Mariam. Mariam is one of only 10 female mountain guides in all of Morocco. But before we start our hike, we woke up for sunrise and fueled up on a traditional Moroccan breakfast with Mariam. This one is a pancake called semen, and this one is barir. Butter. Another Moroccan pancake. This one goes with honey. Mm. This one it's most with jam or butter. In a Berber culture, people they started in early morning with a barley soup. This hike will take us through all five senses. <laughs> Mohammed lives with his family in a small village. This is my almonds, wow. my walnuts. Like most of the village, his family are farmers. My favorite thing is, of course, the clean air. Here we are, we can far from any pollution. And the body of the, the nature, which is more green and simple life in small villages, of course. As people here, they mostly grow uh, what they need for themselves. It's a kind of self-sufficient. There is a cemetery of uh, rabbis. It's uh, all the rabbis that has been in the village, buried in the village. Yeah, just, just near, but near the mosque, there is uh, an old synagogue with the cemetery, the white, the white place. The Jewish has been here for hundreds of years ago. They have left the village, but they come back here every year to celebrate the memories of the rabbis that's buried in the village. So next week there will be a big festival here called Hailula, Jewish for Jewish. All Moroccan Jewish that are related to the village, they will come back oh. again to the village to celebrate this next week. Amazing. So there is a lot of Muslims there working and preparing for the, for the, for the fest. The common language that all Moroccans speak, it's called the uh, uh, Darija. Is uh, like a new language, is a language that's grown with a mix of other cultures and languages. Uh, it's mixed of uh, Berber and Arabic and French and Span Spanish and Portuguese and Maltese. So that's a language is not written, is not is not uh, being uh, taught at schools, but it's the language of the whole North Africa. But why it still existed in mountains? in small villages are not in the cities because uh, small villages are always uh, independent that's why they keep their the first identity the first the first language the first culture cities no big cities because it's more open and a lot of cultures that has been passed through morocco has made a big influence that's why it is ch changed the language is changed we stopped so much throughout the hike to learn about the different plants being grown and to smell them all olive tree here Carob tree. Yes. And that's the fruit. For, for chocolate? Oh, for chocolate. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I can see the fruit here. But there are, uh, there are uh, kinds of juniper. junipers. We'll show you later what one, one uh, we can use for the, the cooking. Dried juniper is used as a medicine and is often eaten with laben, a buttermilk, and is used to treat fevers. Oh, I love thyme. It's so good. It smells so strong. That's the rest of the group. <laughs> so we split from the group. So now Tayo and I are continuing the hike up with our guide Mohammed, And the rest of the group have gone with Mariam. And we're going a bit higher up and they are going down to the village where we're gonna meet them later for some home cooked food after this hike. We're gonna go up, maybe we, 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 can, we can meet them maybe. Yeah. We, can, we can try. You see the goats? Up there. They are talking to each other. The leaves of the, the of the, the palm trees. No. It's good because uh, it's more uh, healthy. Because you get place for the air. Mm. Have is the plants is not like something Synthetic. something you don't know. Yeah. Material you don't know. That's past the. Yeah. I'm glad I brought it with me. <laughs> it's really helpful. <laughs> I 
Oh, we're gonna go down the goat path. Through the goat path, yes. Nice. So down here. And then we're gonna have lunch. Going to see the goats. We have to watch our step. <laughs> have to make sure not to step in all poo. <laughs> Donkey poo. Oh, I'm hoping we can catch up with the goats. Tayo and I are the last two on this hike with our guide Muhammad. We're going down to meet the rest of our group now in the village. We're taking the goat and donkey path and we're ready for a delicious home cooked meal. I'm trying to make sure my hat does not fly away. <laughs> Look at the view though. Can you see them? I can hear them. Oh, there they are. I can hear a dog as well. Oh yeah, you can see them over, over there. So there is a donkey coming. Ah, okay. So the dog we heard barking is with the donkey. And the dog Okay, the dog is protecting the goats. So <laughs> we're moving away from the dog who thinks we're gonna steal the goats. But that dog is very intense. How many dogs are there? There's two. Okay, there's two. Muhammad is saving us from the dogs. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. We'll go quickly. I don't like dogs, but get dogs. Oh, shh. <laughs> the dogs sound very vicious. I'm trying not to let them scare me. <laughs> so they've stopped barking. Which way? No, this no. Way? Oh, they're still coming. Oh, okay. Which way? Which way? No, no, up, down. Down, okay, let's keep going down. Okay. Let's go quick. Until we, we get away from the goats. The goats. There are some friendly dogs, but some... Some not so friendly ones. Yeah, some they, they do their job very serious. Yeah, these are very good yeah, dogs. It's fine. <laughs> They're doing their job well. Do I go past them? Oh, look at the baby goats. This is the time. Time. I'm hoping we've escaped the dog, the near dog attack <laughs> threat. The, go the goats are going up that way, so I'm hoping we've we're clear. The goats are just right here. The dogs have gone down. This is lavender. It smells so good. Oh, this is wild onion. Yeah. Wow. It's a big onion here in the underground. It is clay. Clay. Two things. This is the, the clay. Mm -hmm. Clay for the what they use for so for the local materials like tagines, everything that we need for the kitchens and things like ovens. And it's uh, also there is uh, uh, the oxide of iron. Yes. Mm -hmm. That makes also the, the soil so red. We nearly reached the village that we're going to for our home cooked meal, which we're very excited about. <sighs> what an adventure. It's been so lovely having Mohammed, the local guy, showing us around because there's a lot of things I wouldn't have noticed, like the wild onion or how to get away from the dogs. <laughs> um, honey. Honey, oh wow. Is that common here? 
Yeah, that's uh, you put them here because there is a uh, lot of flowers. Uh, so these are all almond trees behind me. You can see one over here. Nice, this, nice. Yeah. big. Yeah. Very big. Yeah, this big. In Iran, we sometimes eat them like this. So in every village, there is some few channels like this. Yeah. Ooh. No melting water from the river through the gardens of villages. So it passes through the villages and then they share water and they have a system of uh, customers that's organized the manager, management of water in dry seasons. So how every family can use water, water. for uh, irrigate the fields. Most villages in the area have no sewage system. So they have a system now, then they will take them to break them and then separate barley from the hay. This is traditional way by the wind blowing. They put in a place higher where is uh, wind blowing then by this the, it helps to separate the, the barley from the hay. Then you can use barley for the, the bread and then the hay for the, the donkeys. So after oh, harvesting we carry it like this on a mule. Across we get a donkey and, um, and the horse, then we get a mule. The mother is uh, the horse and uh, donkey is the, the donkey is the father. Oh, that's unusual. Okay. Yes, yes this is how. Then we get a mule. It's a more practical animals for very hard works in mountains. Right. You can carry lo uh, a lot of things. You can carry at, until until 200 kilograms okay. and go up on on, on mountains mm. on hills. That's now the big the big uh, the big almonds that make the fruits. You can yeah. say. So is this your almond tree? Yeah, yeah. This is my almonds, wow. my walnuts. This is Mohammed's garden. He so kindly invited us into his family home. Is there any fruit? Or not no, yet? it's coming. You may see some here. Yeah, still uh, coming later. Nice. This is the pomegranates with the flowers. Very nice. It's pomegranates. Yeah, thank you for showing us your It's home. fine. So what's that nice smell? It's uh, uh, partially. We joined the rest of the group and started by drinking water from a Berber clay mug lined with tar and, of course, Moroccan tea. Mohammed's family made fresh bread and served this with olive oil, salt, cumin and salad. And the speciality? Rafisa, a traditional Moroccan dish made with chicken, lentils, fenugreek and onions and served on a bed of shredded cinnamon, trip pastry or bread and topped with boiled eggs. The young boy is a student from the local Quranic school. They learn about Islam in depth and can recite the Quran by heart. The bread we do, we do make fire here, so we would then we get the embers. Mm -hmm. So uh, then here we make the bread. Did you say the bread, the local bread? You said it's cooked on the sides of the oven. Wow. Here. And then you can, on the top, you can uh, cook the tagine or the couscous or the, uh, okay. uh, the chicken, whatever you want, thing you want to. So you can, if you have a fist, you can take the embers and use it like this to take the embers and put here in this uh, breezers mm. for tagines. So we've just had a beautiful home cooked meal in uh, Mohammed's home. It was delicious. Everything was local, locally sourced, and it's not really something that we'd be able to find in a restaurant. So we feel very, very lucky to have eaten there. And now we're hiking back to our accommodation for the night, and we're gonna have a class. Local shop. It's a local shop. Hanut. It's the Hanut. 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 All of these trunks are uh, poplar, yeah, poplar trees. Poplar. Sometimes you will ones. find the bamboo and poplar. Mm. 
This one is barley, this one is broad beans. That's the onion, yeah. What's in that squash? Yeah, the, the dark green, the, the green one mm -hmm. with the big lace, it's yeah. a squash. Mm, it smells so yeah. good, I love mints. Yeah. can smell it. This one we just make, we mm. put it with the water and it's for... Tea. Uh, oh, digestion. Digestion, yeah. yeah. This is geranium. Yeah. No chemical products for their veggies or organic. So then the baba food is very healthy. Yeah. And fresh. Up or down? Um, I'm assuming down. Okay. <laughs> oh. No one. Can you see them? Oh no. no. <laughs> Mariam and I got distracted by all the incredible things to smell that we may or may not have lost the rest of the group. I feel like I heard them from this side. But we made it back in one piece. Thank you so much to Mohammed and Mariam for taking us around the Atlas Mountains and also to Mohammed's family for cooking us a delicious home cooked meal. I hope that you've enjoyed coming along this adventure with us and I will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.